Bom dia, bom dia, guys. So, Rafael Jackson here back again with, with another episode, and we're gonna talk about insecurities and ego. So, that's gonna be pretty interesting. How are you today, man? Good, you feeling good? good. Yeah, feeling it's good? a great day. We had class this morning already. Um, we met some new people that came to the class, it was good, awesome. it was really good, and uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's a good day. Very good day. We are ready to share a little bit about insecurity yeah. and uh, ego, how yeah. to defeat your ego and uh, become a better person when you understand uh, the way between you and your ego, how to defeat and uh, yeah, and become a better person. Yeah, no, and one of the things why we're doing this is become is because to have a good transition from what we talked about about competition and self defense and and health and everything like everything that comes from from that it's becoming self-aware of what you have uh, from your past so um i want to give you a little bit of preview of why we're doing this podcast and a little bit of the context of the three main subjects of of the fortunato podcast and also we we have if you don't if you see our little logo on the picture uh, you can see the fortunato podcast with a uh, health fulfillment and jiu-jitsu and and Jackson and I have found not only health but fulfillment in Jiu Jitsu, not only business wise from our learned term of of getting paid through Jiu Jitsu and helping people in that part of having that fulfillment and health of having the a little bit more time and focus on on our health and our food and our exercise and everything else. And uh, so Jiu Jitsu has given us those two. But from other people, I think we want to help find their own, or maybe there's have that because we have some uh, we have met some people that want to transition to jiu jitsu to have more fulfillment and health. So that's why we picked those those two topics, and jiu jitsu is one of the one of the glues them together that made it for us, and uh, maybe for you in the future. But I think those two things, health and fulfillment, uh, they're the most important part. And in the U.S., you can do that. And and, and I don't know if I've seen the recent news um, from Venezuela and Jackson from Brazil. In Venezuela, they cut off their light for four days. And there are some spots here and there that still doesn't have any light. Some of them they do now. But imagine living in Venezuela. You can't find any fulfillment. You can't find any health. And to change you to there, I think it's really hard without no lights. You have to worry about other things. So there's no chance to do all that stuff there so that's why we we talk about those three uh, three topics because we're lucky enough to be here and that's why uh, we very talk lucky about it. very yeah. lucky to be here so um, so yeah let's talk about a little bit of on the part of not only health and, fu- and, and fulfillment but through just we talk about it about insecurities and ego before so um you told you told a story about how in the last podcast how you were training before of trying to like defeat the other, the other, not the other students, but defeat your partners that were training to compete, and you were doing it in a way that you you weren't trying to be defeated because you wanted to be not only the best in between them, but train to be the best in the competition. Like I know that you have many stories on that, and and I think for uh, for the people that is watching this, and for me, I'm curious to see uh, to to hear you what uh how can how do you defeat your uh your insecurity of not being the best in the school and at the same time your ego like letting go like letting go of okay i'll tap if he got me i'm not gonna get i don't i prefer my health of not getting injured then okay he tapped me i'm def- um i'm i lost so you're like no i prefer my arm i prefer my health of, my health of the arm continue training for life instead of Man, he broke my arm, but I, he didn't. He didn't tap me out, though. He didn't tap me out. So yeah, it's a very common situation that happened in jiu-jitsu, and uh, of course that reflects in life a lot. Uh, one thing that we do in class with the kids a lot, uh, we get them all excited to play a game with us, and then uh, we ask like, "Who is ready to lose?" <laughs> and when I first said that, I look at the parents, and the parents like. What are you talking about? Like, are we really teaching our kids how to lose? And I say to myself, yes, we are preparing our kids 
to be okay with the lost. You know, lose is a good thing. And I think that's very related with your ego. You know, and uh, related with your question more is, uh, I, have, I have lost to myself many times before training hard and have this mindset of that I should defeat all my students all the time in order to have the respect that I, I was looking for. You know, you get to the gym and it's uh, used to look good. You line up 15, 20 guys in the wall and you look at them and you feel like, man, I have to defeat them all. I have to top everybody out, you know, and uh, that was the goal. What was very good. I did that for many years, you know, being able to defeat those guys. And of course, you get a little older and um, and then you don't have that same that same st stamina and the same strength. And of course, at the same time, your students learn more Jiu Jitsu and they get better and they get to know what you're good at and things get more struggle. And uh, that was a hard thing for me. It was very hard for me like to leave the gym if a student have mounted on me and I could not escape. For example, like the time ran out after a 10 minutes sparring session and I end up under the mount trying to escape and I could not successfully escape from that position even though that's not even a submission you know imagine like when I really got submitted by my student for the first time you kind of you see that a lot in jiu-jitsu actually you know like uh, two guys training let's put the example here purple belt training with a white belt okay this purple belt like 20 years older and he's training with the white belt. And then the white belt gets him a submission. And then the white belt is nearly close to tapping him. He says, hey, let me show you this. Let me show you this thing here that I learned here. <laughs> and then he stopped right there. He stopped the training. Let, let me teach you this, how, how you're going to get really good at this arm bar that you're doing here. But he have already lost. He already lost that momentum there. But because he cannot accept that, that situation that he was about to tap, he stopped the train, he don't give the victory to his partner, so his partner didn't finish the move yeah. because he don't he cannot handle his ego, you know, and cannot handle that loss. And maybe he thought that he was he did it wrong because the other guy was saying like, Oh, stop there, I think you're doing some uh, something here, you can get better. Yeah, you and can get better. Really yeah, like, he used his yeah. experience that he's more experienced than the other guy because he's yeah. two ranks above. Uh, we have a guest here in the <laughs> podcast today. Surprise guest. I, I'm sure this animal here is okay with the, <laughs> the ego, right? And uh, yeah, this is something very common that I've seen many, many times. Uh, people like stop and they write on the submissions happening to teach something that they know. Oh, let me show this variation here of the arm bar that I saw a long time ago. Oh, you're going to do very good. And then change the subject. Change the subject right there just because you're not able to handle that, that loss right there. And uh, that happened to me many times. You know, when I first got tapped by students, that the student really came, came in a point like to put me in a submission, you know, I was kind of not taking that the way I should. And like, really like, oh man, good move, very good. Let's go again. Let's just go again. Yeah. And even those after, when I started to master that a little more, let's go again. But then that let's go again was a payback. Now you're going to see, yeah. now that you tap me out, you're going to see what's coming. Yeah. Then I will go really hard on the student and put everything I have to go and tap him out. So at least we finish the training even, you know. And uh, today I can say that I mastered that so well that uh, I can tap. I can get myself in a bad position and I'm totally fine with that. Totally, totally and, fine. And what do you think was your shift on... Or like because sometimes we need and this is uh, in my my, pers my per perspective is like sometimes we need like a little shift of 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 importance like we we appreciate more different things so for me and I th and for you what was your shift on your end goal like I know that your mentality was oh I want to train for life so what was that moment that changed it well, the moment that really changed is was kind of, I have to, I really had to learn it in a hard way. You know, the moment that changed was when I had a herniation disc 
on my back, on my spine, mm. that yeah. put me unable to train for, not to train, but to live and do everything what I do today for a year and a half that I could not move my body. I was teaching classes miserably. Uh, it was already part of my life. The students come to the gym, hey, professor, how's your back today? How you feel? And I was like, oh, I'm okay. You know, so bad that uh, I even changed my car to get a car with a uh, warm seat that I could warm the seat. So that seat could like warm up my back before I get to the gym. So it would feel a little better, you know? And um, luckily today I see that as another very positive thing, that back injury that I had because I learned something that really changed my life yeah. called foundation training that we're gonna eventually talk about that more. And uh, of course I have zero back pain today and never felt in a better shape. And I mastered my ego, you know, I really mastered my ego training because I wanna do this for the rest of my life. And yeah. the only way to do that it's accept the loss, you know, and take that as a victory. Give the victory to your partner and be fine with it, you know, be fine. And uh, I yeah. think that's a, a very, very important thing that you master in your life. A lot of, uh, most of the dojos, you know, uh, there is a sign on the door where people say like, oh, leave your shoes and your ego at the <laughs> door. Like, leave it there. You can't do that. You can't just take your ego out of you and leave there. This takes a while for you to master, yeah. you know, take a lot of a mindset to master how to be okay with the lost. You know, talking about jujitsu, the lost is not really a lost, you know, it's just a momentum there that your partner was better than you. Yeah. You know, uh, recently we saw that case we talked in the last podcast that's Brazilian competition. The guy he lost. And he He's attacked the to, crowd, yeah. he was about to lose and he about attacked the crowd and he exploded and, you know, and he divert the focus for something else so people would not focus on him tapping for our opponent, you yeah. know? What about you? How you deal with your ego? How yeah. you manage the, the lost? And uh, in Jiu-Jitsu, yeah. I believe that you learn a lot of that with the right formats, yeah. you know, since you've been trained with me and... I was already on that path and uh, of course uh, I really think that Rafael have a very advanced mentality about life and about losing, you know, and uh, I, I never saw you like... Yeah, and I was, uh, I was going to ask you, since the beginning that I've been training with you, um, I never have been like, like ten. I think the most people that don't want to lose are like tens and always trying to yeah. try to use your strength and everything. And for me, that in, in camera looks a little bit, but I'm not a, a store big, so I can't use it still. So in mm -hmm. Jiu-Jitsu, I can't use it. Um, and, and We have a case in the gym very recently, a uh, student, so his name is Miguel. And uh, Miguel came from another gym, very competitive, super yeah. talented guy, extremely Precision, strong. Precision, beautiful. Good. And yeah. uh, remember Miguel walking the gym, two stripes in the white belt, and uh, I immediately noticed that he had a potential, but the ego was, was on his way, you know, and uh, we always, it's always take a long time, but I believe yeah. that Miguel mastered that so fast, yeah. right? He mastered that so fast. Like the sooner I start to talk with him, I say, Miguel, you have to slow down. You have to think about, about the moves and uh, be okay in an uncomfortable position. He actually did like in a couple of weeks, maybe less than that, like maybe two weeks, Miguel was totally another person, right? Yesterday, actually, uh, we trained to him and we were talking about yeah. the class, you know? He always stayed after the class and we talked about life and stuff. Great person. And uh, he's also, he teach kids in a school and I believe that he, now he can pass that better to his students, you know? Yeah. I'm very proud of this guy, like how much with, just with a talk, with a conversation, was not a technique, was not yeah. me trying to beat him up, was not me like forcing him to do it. He's, he just understood yeah. it. He just yeah. said, oh, okay, that makes sense. And now you turn it to him and he's super relaxed. He's okay to, if you have to tap, he do it. He helped the, the beginners in a, such a nice way than he used yeah, he to. He transitioned super well. You know, you see, Miguel, if you're watching this, <laughs> we are super proud, you know, and uh, help us to share you know, that with everybody. And knowing, hopefully we can do an, an, an episode with him because there's something interesting that Miguel did and that Miguel shared with us that it was shared with me that I asked him um, he went when he was white, uh, white belt three stripe he went to compete one time 
and when he went to compete it, he came back and he told us about his feedback and everything and the first thing one of the things we didn't tell him anything about competition like for the students that are with us we don't talk about much competition if they want to go and try <laughs> if they're gonna go and try we have an expert here if you can see mm -hmm. the, uh, the cat um mm -hmm. so if if you, they don't want to compete if they want to compete uh, like they can do that no problem because that's a little test that they want to do personally it's not something that that we encourage in in the gym um but he went and tried out yeah I mean, there was it. a full package yeah he's so, a full package no but he didn't he, he went out and then we didn't even talk to him I about the, the competition and everything after a, uh, a couple i, I think one month part. yeah one month two months i think not uh, not as long um i asked him if he wants to compete again because he said yes when he came back on that competition he said yeah maybe i'm gonna try again then a couple of weeks and months later he said, no, I'm not interested in that. Like, he, he just changed. He, yeah, was, he changed he really fast. Shift. Really, really fast. And that's really important because uh, one thing that we talked about in the health part, when you are in the environment that you're looking up to people that you want to be not like or, or just exactly. No, you're looking up to people that you feel that that's your goal that you want to go through. And we don't follow any competition. We don't care about that. We just want to train for life, Jiu-Jitsu. Um, that's when Miguel maybe shift. I I'm gonna ask him because I'm curious what shifted uh, for his mind. He said like I'm not gonna compete anymore. I'm not interested. Mm -hmm. And then that's when I saw like his all jujitsu transition. I was mm -hmm. training with him yesterday. I was pumping him up because he's now what I do in jujitsu and what Jackson does and what the the really high level black belt does is just relax when they're training and if you get tap out it's no problem they defend they're waiting for the right moment they're not breathing hard they're just waiting and patiently moving and exhausting their partner when they're controlled like they move smartly and he's getting into that part now mm -hmm. and he's a bigger guy he's stronger so he has that ability if he gets that mindset and then he has the the strength and the physicality to do it he's gonna be super good in in, in jiu-jitsu so that's one of the things that you can do and see for yourself in the competition part. See that that there's a benefit there, but at the same time, when you're training, when you're training, you see you, the both end goals, a uh, goal that you have to tap and lose and gain the third place or the second place or whatever, or just train here for life that you're helping each other out and get caught. And then one thing that I'm doing myself that I recommend all the students. And that Jackson does super uh, super well. That I learned with uh, from him and and other academies uh, that I went that I went to California, for example. Um, that they go and you get captured into an armor to whatever submission. When you get caught, and this is something that that Henry and he don't talk about all the time. Henry and he don't Gracie. They they create a, a beautiful curriculum about self defense, and and they're the uh, part of the, uh, the uh, Gracie family. So. What Henry says as a principle is when you get caught, it's already there. So why are you gonna escape from it? Mm -hmm. So when I train, I get if I get caught, if I see that the arm is there, you have it or whatever, I just tap and then keep going. And then to I try to prevent it instead of defending it. So I prevent the submission instead of defending already in, already locked. Because sometimes if you practice yourself jujitsu and Jackson can uh, affirm this of course the injuries happen when you are tense when you are using your strength to to try to escape your arm to try to posture when you're in the triangle with your neck they're trapped uh, on top of your um when you have the legs of the opponent trying to trap your posture there and then you have you're using your strength you're all tensed up you're all like trying to escape explosion. and using your power yeah your yeah. explosion the exposure as well so that's when the injuries comes in that's yeah. not only the injuries yeah that's your likely, ego that's yes. everything so that's something that helped me i was lucky enough to transition to the training well and the school that jackson uh, jackson rewarded me more because i was doing that already since the beginning and because i knew since the beginning from from seeing henry in the videos that i told you about in, in, in youtube explaining that he wanted to train for life mm -hmm. i was already with that goal in mind so i entered with jackson and talked to him about that stuff about jujitsu self defense jujitsu and he himself told me like no i love that stuff i want to transition to that mm -hmm. i knew that i was already in the right place and i was going to get rewarded every single time that i train the way that we train now that is 
much safer and that we want to trade for life um yeah the the injuries in the gym are so low now yeah. that we're trying to establish this mindset and share that with everybody you know the injuries being like really really low like rarely a student get injured in the gym and if it happens it's like very little things that happen you know and uh, i remember back then when i used to have that competition mindset of defeating everybody and don't tap for anything never yeah. never tap never you know that's something like I always been taught like tap is bad it's, it's you don't want to do that you want to always find a way to escape and sometimes that's not what it is not sometimes all the time that's not yeah. what it is you know you need to accept the loss like a champion you know accept the loss like a champion is something that's really hard to take to, to learn and there is nothing that's gonna teach you better than training jiu-jitsu with somebody better than you. Yeah. You know, you know that guy's better. You wanna be like him. You want your goal is to get close and and control that person and eventually submit them. But there is a limit. You know, you have to respect that the person Probably. knows a little better, knows a little more, yeah. and learn with it. You know, take advantage instead of you risk to get an injury and escape out of a submission i believe that's much more productive if you tap and you ask that student how that happened yeah. you know ask him like oh man that was a nice triangle how did you set that up the guy gonna be so happy to tell you yeah. he's gonna be so happy so you learn much more if you accept the loss and then you're gonna be able to ask and your partner gonna be super happy because he's on top of the mountain in that moment there he just finished you and of course that's that's the goal you know the submission is the is the cherry on top you know and he just finished and like oh yeah man i can show you look look at this look how i did it look how i did it. and then you catch that you know alex from uh from headquarters in california man that yeah, guy is so him. awesome you know i always train all the time when i train with him there is not one training that I finish the training, like even me without ask, he comes to me, hey, you know that sweep that I, uh, I got mm -hmm. like 12 times, you know that sweep that I sweep there 12 times, come here, I'm going to show you, come on the side here, and he goes there and he break that in for me, you know, because he lives that mentality much longer than I do, so he knows the value of lose, but win, you mm -hmm. lose with the top, but you win a new technique, a new way to go there, and probably next time he gets you there, you're gonna know better what's happened and you're gonna be able to defend better and you know it's much more productive much more productive and much less risk of getting injured yeah you know? and and we can transition super well in the in this part on on the insecurity part so that most people are insecure of failing and that's the topping part they think that they're losing like you said they think that they, that they're uh, feeling the professor or feeling themselves or the other guys are gonna look at him like oh he tapped on that part mm -hmm. I mean and that's what I feel and maybe you you can tell one story that, that happened maybe one of, the, one of your schools that the is not losing when you tap is you're learning what you did wrong yeah. and it, it gives you uh, like feedback like super fast of what you're doing wrong in Jiu Jitsu like Jiu -Jitsu, when you train Jiu Jitsu and you go to the advanced class and, and start to spar or roll a little bit you're starting to get to know your moves and the other person's move against you so they're actually f is a loop uh, a feedback loop that they're telling you exactly what you're doing they're responding to whatever you're trying to give mm -hmm. and and well, well, when we talk about the mentalities and we talk about alex and henry they're from they have an academy at the headquarters in great and grace university in, Cal in la in los angeles and, and torn sorry and um and one thing that i got from from evangel that's another instructor there that you you're not trying to get the other person you're not trying to force them into a submission you're trying to they're gonna give you the submission and that's i think mm -hmm. evander and he don't say that all the time that they're gonna give it to you so that's why you have to listen a lot in you just you go you train you learn whatever if you get caught no problem you give that to the other person so you're you're learning to how not to give it to them now so okay you start to get in a little bit better in your defense so you're not yeah you have to change the perspective in in the security of losing of failing of of thinking that you everybody's gonna 
gonna laugh at you if you fail or if yeah. you lose or if you're tired. Yeah, it's not even about the other person. Switch. It's yourself. You know, yeah. it's yourself. And it's, it's funny enough because uh, in Jiu-Jitsu, one of the most common say is in Jiu-Jitsu you never lose. Or you win or you learn. Yeah. But it's not really real. It's not really real. Most of the gyms say it, but they don't apply that yeah. in, in reality. You know, like you say that as a, as, as a, as a fun thing to okay. say, as a, as a good image, yeah. you know, of your gym. Like, oh, here nobody ever loses. Or you, or you win or you learn. Yeah. But it's not, the reality is not like that until you break this ego down and you trespass your insecurities and you just be fine with it, you know? So it's something that's, it's a process, you know? Not everybody's like Miguel that can master that faster. Mm -hmm. Took me a long time for me to learn until you like I really, I really, I really get a serious injury that I was about, all the doctors told yeah. me like, hey Jackson, forget Jiu Jitsu, you cannot train Jiu Jitsu anymore. And I say like, man, must have a way, must have a way to do it, you know? and. Uh, very very happy that i found that way you mm -hmm. know and uh another thing that's uh sometimes you don't listen to people because you think you know too much you know and that's also happened with me when i had the back injury i met this guy richard groves he's a pilot captain from a 777 airplane works for united uh, british airways and uh, I was closing the gym one day and this guy was sitting on the, on the curb, old bike, his clothes inside a plastic bag. Mm. And I was leaving the gym and I said, hey, what's up, man? How's it going? He said, oh, no, what, what do you guys do here? I said, oh, we do Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. What about you? Oh, no, I'm just coming from a yoga class and I'm going to my hotel. I said, cool. And he asked me like, hey, what's this Jiu Jitsu about? And then mm -hmm. I, I opened the gym again and I turned on the lights and I showed him a little bit about Jiu Jitsu and uh, of course I was with my back all stiff and I could not move and he's like, what's happening your, on your back? And I say, oh man, I had like a herniation disc and I, I'm bad. And he said, man, really? I, I had that too a long time ago and I did this thing called the foundation training and uh, and it really helped me. And at that point, I have tried everything. I've seen several doctors, all kinds of therapies, and he told me like, "Hey, try this." And I, I thought, I thought like I, I knew about it already, mm -hmm. you know. And I didn't listen to him. I said, "Yeah, sure, sure, I'm gonna try it." And then every time he fly to Houston, he starts to come to the gym to do private class with me and train with the guys. And every time he come like, "So how foundation training doing for you?" I say, "Oh man, it's doing really good." But I never really <laughs> tried it. I never really tried it because I thought that I knew it. I thought that I knew what's going on. Yeah. And, uh, and time passed and he come many, many times. One day he called me from the UK. We have become good friends actually. He's one of my best friends today. And uh, he called me from the UK and he said, hey, did you try foundation training for real? I can't believe all this time have passed and you still with back pain and not getting any benefit out of it. And then that day I say, man, I need to look into it. I need to look into it better, you know? So I finally, gave up and I say mm, Richard he knows more than me about these subjects you know I've listened to a lot of doctors a lot of therapists and chiropractors but this random guy that was sitting on the curb there he knows something that may help me and I finally give in and I start to learn more about foundation training and that was the thing you know and uh, I laugh with him all the time like man I didn't listen to you and of course me spreading foundation training all the time now, trying to help other people. I see the same behavior that I had before, people that struggle with pain. And uh, when you're in pain, you are a different person, you know? And if you ever mm -hmm. had back pain, you know what I'm talking about. It's something that lives with you and you get used to that thing, you know? And uh, you don't want to listen to people sometimes, people that don't have a... Uh, uh, respectful degree, you know, like, oh no, but all these doctors, this doctor, he is a 40 years back pain specialist, he told me this and that, you know, yeah. sometimes so, another guy that he don't have that same degree, he knows something better than you, Yeah, you know, so... Yeah, sometimes you're exploring a little bit of yeah, the options. Yeah, the ego goes on the way in a lot of aspects of your life. Yeah, you know, and, and I will go back with something that you said, that sometimes it is ourself that stop us from doing it. And that's exactly that sometimes we stop us that we think 
we know but we don't and that's something that i f- i feel that i heard a lot from one, one guy that i listened that that says that we sometimes judge ourselves too much mm-hmm. and and what i mean by that is what jackson did uh, when what jackson did when he was training he was judging himself too much of and nobody was pressuring him maybe the environment a little bit but i don't have enough content to say maybe you can uh, you can enter a little bit of the, on that part but that he was judging himself on i have to defeat everybody here mm-hmm. to be a champion i have to not tap to anybody here even though they're lower bell or higher bell i can't be tapped or i have to keep going on my back or you know so sometimes we judge and in for me it's the same thing i went through a little a little bit of the uh, on on my blue but when i got it i was going a little bit on, on a plateau of I, I, mean, I wasn't controlling anybody i was still from on the bottom and and when i got to to the top i wasn't finishing anybody like i because i don't care much about stuff so um i was seeing to, uh, from my guy that was telling me no put a little bit more pressure maybe put, uh, like try to try a little bit harder and 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 i started to doing it and i still didn't get the finish or the submission or, or whatever and in that instance of just one month like just in that month or maybe two months that i was trying that mentality i um no one month um i just like move wrong uh, wrongly my my toe and just a little bit of stretch over stretch my toe and that's one one of the one of one or two of the injuries that i got ever in three years of training in the gym training jiu-jitsu and and i was and i was like that's not and that was a little bit of feedback of what i was doing wrong that that's not me like generally that's not me so i was judging myself through another person's eye that you don't have to do that at all so i started doing what uh, what i was doing from back again without judging myself if i get tapped where i couldn't control the other person and my jiu-jitsu even went like super high because i follow my own path of what i care about yeah. so the judging part sometimes it doesn't come from you personally but it comes from another person's another closest person from you that put that opinion on your head and you're judging through their voice yeah. and you're hearing your own voice thinking that is your own but actually is that other person that is closest to you that it, their opinion matters but actually you don't care that you're just trying to make them happy and, and that's not cool through the long term if you want to be happy with what you're doing so sometimes and that happens in everywhere that happens only in jiu-jitsu but that happens when you're at work it can be your boss it can be your peers and when that happens when you're in high school or college and you're trying to pick the career your family is pressuring you to go one way but you know that you want something else and you're judging yourself because you want to be one place and that happened that happened to me i was in an environment of of the oil industry of course venezuela and everything my mom worked for chevron so i was in that peer environment of being an engineer my mom never pressured me at all never nobody pressured me on anything but because i was surrounded by that i was pressuring myself to do it mm-hmm. so it was my own judgment of me my own insecurity of not being not making my family happy happy because they, they don't care they don't care about themselves they were going to support me either way but that judgment in that in my mind and that insecurity of oh I'm, they're gonna they're gonna think that I'm not successful they're not gonna think that I'm uh, that I'm not gonna have uh, the the engineer diploma or whatever and when I moved here to the U S I start to discover different options I didn't care about engineering I didn't care about being in an office you know, or having a boss or having a big office or traveling to a different place in that world in the world but. I wasn't gonna travel to enjoy the country. I was gonna travel to work. Yeah. So for me, for me, it's not a priority. So that's one thing that sometimes we have to uh, deal with that insecurity that is the judgment of other people. Like at the end of the day, what matters is what you what you care about, and then the judgment of you, like putting too much pressure on you, thinking that other people are gonna judge you, but then I change everything. Like I, let, I tell you now, and this happened with before we did this podcast. This is one of the things that that I encounter a little bit of of friction because I was like, oh, we do the podcast and we appear in the video, and 
I don't know my my mom's friends or my family's friends or my friends in school they're gonna see this and, and they're gonna say like oh he's trying to be whatever or jiu-jitsu I don't care like I don't, and now that that this we have uh, this park is right now is super small but we have gotten and Jackson knows this we have gotten just feedback from different people here and there at least one just when we got one person to yeah, say this pocket helped us yeah, yeah. you their pockets help uh, help me to see like a different thing or oh this changed what uh, the point of view that I had about this and everything and th- that happened today today morning during the morning with one of the students that that already makes everything and that's what I care the most and that's what we care the most and that judgment or that insecurity it went off when you actually go through the path that you care the most instead of oh I'm gonna put the other people uh, first yeah first instead of your own and when you do your own not only the other people are gonna go silent but your life is gonna go like even like yeah. I can't explain it and Jackson knows about this when you just go through your path and you leave behind the insecurities and the ego of not only judging yourself but the opinions of other people and just having some things to deal with when you deal with them your life is just like a highway you just yeah. flow with it just like a river you just go floating around the river and then yeah you wake up calmly there. with a different perspective every day yeah. you know when you do exactly what you love and what you born to be you know and you wake so up in the more. morning you know that you have that day waiting for you we uh, sometimes in the morning class I do that I line up everybody and I say everybody like hey guys close your eyes and you know just focus on your goals for today and your challenges and everything and while I'm talking I try to go through these people mind and I know that there is a higher percentage of people that do what they don't like to do you mm-hmm. know they do what they are told to do or what life lead them to do yeah you know and that's something that's i know that's in a lot of people's way and uh, when i share that with people in the morning class especially you know and i see everybody like super focused there and concentrated i think like oh man what these people thinking right now you know and uh, i'm sure that the ego and insecurities are all there and the judgment of other people telling them how they should run their lives you know and uh we are so fortunate me rafael and i'm sure like a lot of other people that really make their passion a lifestyle and they can make their life out of it you know how good that life is you know i see i see my wife that she she works for a big company and uh and she found something that she really liked to do inside that company you know and i see the passion on her really good like really she, like it and she's amazing yes yeah, she's good at it and now that she found something that she really liked to do she's like bringing out the genius that was hidden inside you know like she really like i see like that's motivation to go and do what you do best you know and uh it's really nice it's really good to see it you know so yeah. never let the ego it's hard to say never let the ego don't be on your way because yeah. the ego and the inner voice inside your head it's something huge and strong you know and to defeat that it's 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 a lot it's of it's a lot of work you know so i believe that jiu-jitsu is one of the best tools if trained in the right way with the right format it's one of the the best best tools you can use to master that you know for your children for your family you know i recently been trained jiu-jitsu with my wife and my kids in the house and the connection you have with everybody you know when people start all your family start to understand the values of what jiu-jitsu teach you know these values that you learn from jiu-jitsu it's something big you know like give it a try and uh find the right format that's gonna make you happy either in jiu-jitsu either in life you know it's never late it's never late yeah. you know re- uh, one of the podcasts i shared that story of the nine year old guy that was my student in the uk and he was getting his third degree 
you know, he was finished. Oh, tell the whole story. The whole story. I think you haven't shared it. You yeah, haven't shared it. this guy, he was my student, nine years old, ninety Super years cool old. Come to the gym. Uh, he was doing a research about jiu-jitsu. That was his his dissertation for the end of his his degree. Oh, well, he was like 80, 90? Uh, he was like nearly nine years old. Like I say, ninety, but he was nearly there, probably eighty-seven to nine years old. Jeez. And you know, this guy used to come to the gym and we go get lunch like once a week. Every Friday we used to go get lunch together because he just want to know about me and about jiu-jitsu because I was Brazilian and I, I grew up inside the the environment, jiu-jitsu environment, you know. And uh, I remember like when I asked him, so you have everything, you know, was a very wealthy guy. Why are you still studying? Why are you still studying? Never, never going to forget his answer. If your brain stops, your body stops. So you got to keep learning so something cool. until you die. You know, you got to keep learning. There is no end. There is no end. People talk about about uh, the golden years when I get retired. And what's retirement? You know, like, okay, you work your whole life. You made tons of money. And now what are you going to do? You're going to sit in a chair in the beach and you're going to stay there the whole day? Yeah. That's the wrong format. That's the wrong idea. You know, retirement, it's... If you did something that you didn't like the whole life and you had a goal to do something, that's the time to start. You know, restart again. Restart again. You know, uh, learn that, that passion that you're not able yeah. to. Or if you are able to, there's another step. There's always something else for you to learn. And uh, that was another lesson for me too, when I finally found out my path in Jiu-Jitsu and I really want to be part of this self-defense organization and uh, I was a black belt already and I went there to visit them. I say, hey, I want to be part of this. Oh, great. Just uh, yeah, you have to test. Yeah, you have to, you have to test for a blue belt. And I say, ah, test for my blue belt. Okay, that's easy. You know, <laughs> I, I'm a black belt already. That's easy. Test for the blue belt. So I say, so where's the test? And uh, yeah, the test is here, go and do it. <laughs> and uh, when I tried to do it, I didn't know how to do it. <laughs> I didn't know how to do none of that. I knew it, but on my way, you know, and then I have to go back to the beginning of the line again. You know, I never put the white belt, the, the white belt physically, I never put that white belt physically in my body, but I put that white belt in my brain, you know, and I had to go back and learn the Americana shoulder lock. Learn the arm bar from the mount. Learn the sweep from the guard. From the in a different format. In a different yeah. format. And it's still like I did all the videos and everything. I say, man, I'm done. I'm done. And then now one friend of mine checked the videos and said, Jackson, you, you didn't do anything here. <laughs> and that took me months. I was like putting time on it. And I said, no, I'm a black belt, man. I know how to do this move. No, but you don't know. You don't know. You don't know enough to teach. Mm. This, this way, okay? You have, if you want to be very good at it, you have to teach exactly this way here. Oh, man, come on. You know, Brazilian have this... Uh, jeitinho. Yeah, o jeitinho brasileiro, né? That we call, like, these improvising skills. What actually? We are really good at that. But don't apply for real things. Okay? If something is very real and very efficient and going to give you great results, there is a way to go. There is a there is there is a hill to climb, and it's not easy, you know. So finally, I say, okay, I'm gonna do this thing for real, and that took me months and months. No, it took me years yeah. to master that beginner's program. That's clear in my head today, and uh, I'm very very thankful for Jim Phillips that helped us a lot with that. And we scored actually one of the highest rank you can get, 99. We did 99 score out of 100. That's a, it's, a, it's a good rank, you know. And uh, I remember like, oh, I think we are ready. And then I thought, no, let's do it perfect. You know, let's let's push it to the limit and do it the best we can. And actually, it was a kind of sad that I got one point deduction <laughs> and like, oh, 99. I need to 100. But you know, there is many other tests to come and. Uh, I'm gonna learn from it to do better, better in the others, mm -hmm. you know. So yeah, that's um, it's a little bit of sharing of what's the Those the ego, concepts. the mo monster ego yeah. that's out there in ev all of you head. You have it there. Don't tell me that you don't because we have it there. 
And uh, the more you break it, the more happy you're gonna be, and the more ways gonna be open, you know. No, and, and to to end the, the 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 episode today, one of the things that I want to make sure that you understand is in in the concept, the context. Sorry for the ego and the security part, because there's many meanings to different people what ego is all about, and what we talk about ego. That's one of the reasons we put it together with insecurities. For me, ego is your insecurity talking to you like, don't, don't, uh, don't show it, don't show it. So that way, you don't show your most fear insecurity there. So that way, you don't have to deal with it. And that's what, in my brain, and what I understand from from Jackson's perspective of ego as well is to not to not show your weaknesses. So that's why ego for me. And what do you think? Like ego for you is is yeah. the same thing. Same thing. Mm-hmm. So uh, that's one of the things. Also, that like ego for me is like you think you know more than what you do. Mm-hmm. You know, like you really think that you know about something. Yeah, it's uh, it's part of the ego. You know, it's probably like one of the elements that make the ego a very toxic yeah. thing for you. It's like you think you know more than what you do. You know, black belts out there and. You know, engineers, CEOs, and bosses, whatever you are, you know, like there is always something else to learn. And sometimes the lesson is in you know, something that you don't even imagine. Yeah. You know, Jiu Jitsu teach you that a lot, like something that you never thought you're gonna be struggle with. And then you go and try and you see like you don't know nothing about that. You know, so have yeah. your mi- mentality and your mind open to learn from other people either. That guy that's sitting on the curb with his clothes in a plastic bag, you know, that guy is a freaking captain of a 777 airplane, you know, and he was sitting there with his old shorts. I look at him like, oh man, what's going on? What do you want? And he said, oh, I'm just coming from a yoga class here. And I found out that was an amazing person. You know, he was an amazing guy that taught me one of the biggest lessons in my life, something that I'm donating my life now to learn more and more to help other people to get out of pain yeah you know i learned from a guy that was sitting in the curb in front of the gym you know probably somebody else with a little bigger ego not even talk with him just like excuse me let let me pass here and go and leave that opportunity there because the image doesn't show you what's really hidden inside other people you know we probably give much more value for a guy in a tie driving a nice car you know, oh, whoa, 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 wait, wait, look at yeah, this guy respect, here. Yeah. yeah, a lot of respect for that guy, for the image that he presents. But think about it, you know, think about it because jujitsu teaches you, like that guy in the plastic bag can be the guy that maybe gonna mount on you and gonna make you struggle, you know? Yeah. And the guy on the tie and uh, driving a Porsche there maybe is not the guy that know as much as... Right the happiest guy ever or the guy that doesn't have the life that you want you see all the things are pretty outside but when you go into to his or her life when you break it down there's nothing it's hollow and one of the things before before we go that that i think is pretty interesting that happened for me that i was thinking now that when jackson said like um opening a little bit of the doors to everybody to be a little more humble and listen and everything that happened to me at the beginning when i when I started jujitsu, and I think I haven't shown th- this like uh, thought. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's pretty cool because this is something that that when I got into help Jackson like three years ago, I started by helping in, in the business side. Like I got in and told Jackson like, "Hey, help me out in the bi- I help you out in the business side," and then from there you teach me jujitsu because I was super interested on in it. When I got into it, I thought like I'm not gonna in that in. And I mentioned it to Jackson several times. I'm not gonna be a teacher. I'm not gonna be a teacher. You know this. I'm not gonna be a teacher because I uh, I was still in my mind, on my back of my mind, that person that oh no, if I'm a teacher, then I'm not gonna have the student tie that I want. I'm not gonna have the pretty things that I want. So if I go to the business side, maybe that's gonna help me more. So that image shifted when I saw that I was super happy. I was super happy and didn't mm-hmm. care about all that stuff. And like, today, what's happened yeah. now? You were almost the best teacher that yeah. I ever met. No, in, in my mind, not only that, not only that but and, uh, thank you, man. Appreciate <laughs> it. That, that, that mind shifted because you uh, trying something that you thought that you never w- were going to do in yeah. life, it can be your own thing. And not only your thing, but your thing that makes you most happy in life. You're not only amazing at it, because that's the, that's the path that you want to go. 
that you're amazing at it and that you love it because that's when not only the money gonna come through so you're gonna have everything that you need but you're gonna enjoy it for life and the more you do it the more you're gonna wake up better you're gonna go to bed with your peace of mind yeah. your health is gonna be incredible because you're gonna enjoy everything that, you, that you're doing so uh, that's something that I was realizing now like it's interesting that it shifted by itself just being surrounded by it, not even paying attention to it anymore it's just like shifted for me and like oh I'm super happy just being here just helping everybody and I'm gonna be in the point that I'm gonna have the the freedom in with Jackson because we're gonna go all together but the part that I was looking the most that BMW that something like that I don't even care about that yeah. so it's just for that is more yeah, success it's more for for the people that are neighbors that are looking up to like oh yeah it's that nice car and everything but who cares about what they say I'm super mm -hmm. happy so it doesn't matter so that's the same mentality that 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 I got from from Jackson reading the uh, books and seeing all the videos and everything that helped me just to drill that ego down and that insecurity to like it doesn't matter it just yeah. it doesn't matter so Appreciate everybody. So, any final thoughts? Uh, yeah, appreciate everybody to uh, watching us. Of course, if you listen what we say now, it's because you watch the whole podcast, and really appreciate <laughs> that. You know, yeah, uh, again, investment. we are not any masters in life, yeah. but we are definitely two happy individuals that do what we love every day. We bring a lot of results out of people. We really breaking people's shell. You know, we see like a happening every day through Jiu Jitsu, through foundation training, friendship. You know, we are not on top of the hill the way yeah. we want to be, but we are walking towards that way and we feel it stronger day by day. How much when you helping people and you have the right tools, how much life bring back to you, you know? So open your mind, listen to people, where, however they look and however you judge them you know you always have something to learn from them yeah. you know um, thank you very much we're gonna get some food now again <laughs> I'm hungry now <laughs> and uh, yes yeah no thank you leave a comment everything for the other topics that you want or any feedback or anything like that we have been receiving super awesome feedback from from the podcast so keep keep that keep that in mind any messages any comments anything any topics that you want to 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 share and that we can talk about later we have a few uh, guests hopefully that we can bring in and, and talk about some stuff so it's going to be pretty interesting so, communication yeah. is key for success and that's what <laughs> i'm trying to do share what you know communicate with everybody yeah learn from you and share what we know thank you what we think we know right there you go <laughs> <laughs> See you guys.